Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. Inspired by Bell Potter stock picks for 2023, I asked you, what are your stock picks for this year? I did receive quite a few lists, and for some of them, it wasn't a list at all. It was just one company. So I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do this video, uh, but I'm going to give you some interesting facts, or maybe not so interesting facts in regards to your stock picks. And then I will go through the more popular companies. So I'll be looking at companies that had multiple picks. Before we have a look at those companies with multiple selections, just a few interesting or maybe not so interesting facts of your selections. So there were 28 viewers who gave me a list. And the question for me is, can a list compose of only one item? Because about five viewers only gave me one company. And I'll talk about that in a few slides. Overall, there were 194 selections, which does include those companies that had multiple selections. So if you ignore those companies with multiple selections, overall, there were 150 stocks selected. So no swath of stocks generally sort of um, sway to the smaller cap area. So in terms of larger cap companies on the ASX, we're not talking about those big cap companies. We're not talking about banks. There was no CSL, no Macquarie Bank, no banks. In fact, I think maybe the largest market cap chosen was Goodman Group. And that's also neglecting the five international companies that were chosen, which include Microsoft, uh, Tesla, uh, Google, or Alphabet. So ignoring those, the larger cap companies were uh, largely ignored. So mostly small caps, heaps of explorers. So it seems like the viewers of this channel like mining exploring companies. And I think the reason behind that is just the potential of a significant re-rating in those companies' share price in a one-year period. So it seems like the philosophy of choosing companies for the next year is just a callus that could lead to a significant re-rating in the next year. So five viewers chose only one company and I can see the reasoning behind this. In fact, if this was a competition, say among as many people as possible, say uh, you could have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people picking um, or participating in this sort of competition, I would go down this route by only choosing one company because if you choose a diversified portfolio, more than likely you might do fairly well, but you would be behind those who choose only one company and choose wisely. And this comes back to diversifying versus not diversifying, being concentrated. So you will hear a lot of experts say you need to be diversified. You need to be diversified because if you go down the concentrated risk, the concentrated route, you do significantly increase your risk. But the way to get really, really wealthy is to be more concentrated. Invest or put all your money into one company you think will be successful, like Andrew Forrest with Fortescue. And that is the way to get wealthy, but there is a lot of risk to it. So if this was a competition and a large competition, I probably would only choose one company that I think could increase by 100%, 200%, 300%, 500% in one year. Uh, two other viewers chose only two companies. Nine others chose uh, between three and five companies. And only two viewers chose 20 companies. I also chose 20 companies. So I went down the diversified route, and but I did have a method. I did have a strategy in my choice of those 20 companies, and it's all based off the turnaround story. Uh, those companies that performed really bad in 2021 or 2022 that I think could do much better in 2023 because the valuation of those companies is at attractive levels right now. Now to those companies that were selected multiple times. Only two companies were selected four times. Um, we'll, we'll have a look at those companies. Four companies were selected three times or thrice, and 24 companies were chosen two times. So I've got 23 here. And the reason I've got 23 here, but it's actually 24, is because 
the last viewer put in their list one hour ago, and I've just forgotten to update this particular slide. And that viewer who gets the reward for tardiness is Danis Lepis. I probably pronounced that absolutely horrible. Now, I mentioned tardiness, but there was no tardiness award for this. You could put your list no matter when you want it. But for purposes of me doing or recording this video, this was put in just at the right time. So in a way, tardiness is exactly the wrong word because tardiness would have been put in uh, after I have done or produced or uh, recorded this video. Anyway, Dana selected four companies, Beam Communications, Clinivell, CDX, and AGH. And to be fair with you, I am going to just Google those two companies. CDX is Cardiex. So I don't know much about that company, C-A-R-D-I-E-X. And AGH is Althea. Let me see if I'm right. Yeah, Althea Group Holdings. Wasn't absolutely sure about that. Uh, so I definitely know a little bit more about Beam Communications and Clinivell because I am actually a shareholder of Clinivell and I'm fairly bullish on the long-term potential of that company. And thank you. Thank, I have to thank Danis Lepis because with his selection of Clinivell, that means Clinivell is now a company that was selected multiple times. So let's have a look at the list of companies that was selected multiple times, starting with those two companies that were selected four times. And those two companies were A2 Milk and Ordinate. I'm a little bit surprised about Ordinate, maybe a little bit surprised. I'm actually, I actually did select Ordinate on my list as well. And I am looking at taking a bit of a nibble at that company. So I'm slightly adjusting my strategy from waiting till the share price gets to a level that I think is a little bit more attractive and going to a more taking a nibble no matter when, and then adding to my position if the share price falls. And if the share price doesn't fall, I've already got a holding in that company. So it, share price can go up, but I probably would prefer a share price to come back. So I increase my holdings. Not surprised with A2 Milk. They were the best performing company in Bell Potter's 2022 um, lists. The share price of that company grew something like between 20 and 25%. And I think that company share price has, and valuation has further to run from here and ordinate it's all about the moat in that company and i think there is so much potential for ordinate because it has probably one of the best moats on the asx if not the best moat now to those companies that were selected three times a couple of surprises here uh i was a little bit surprised by santos although when i look at the long term i think about the next three or four years i sort of can understand that but for a one-year period uh, mining companies, it's a tricky one. Oh, I could see, particularly where oil prices are right now, and if we do see oil prices rebound from here, which is, there is potential for that, I could see Santos, Woodside, Beach Energy, Karoon rally from here. Probably would prefer Karoon slightly over Santos. South 32, I have traded South 32 in the past, and it does look like, just looking at the chart, it does look a little bit more interesting Right now, it does look like the share price of that company could be running up. Drone Shield took me by surprise. So a little bit of interest in Drone Shield. And when I have a look, now I could do a video on Bell Potter's 2023 picks tomorrow. And they actually did include Drone Shield in their list. And then Zero. Not surprised by this because share price of Zero has fallen a lot. And this is one of those really popular companies among fund managers. We'll call it a cult stock. I'm going to call these really popular companies among fund managers as cult stocks and zero is definitely a cult stock it has been a cult stock for a while it's one of the reasons why even though the share price has pulled back a fair bit i don't think there's much more for further to fall for that company's share price because it is a cult stock now to those companies that were chosen twice and i've separated these into like sectors or try to combine the uh, uh thematics into the one slide so uh, health in six companies were sort of in this area. So I've separated health into two different slides. So we've got Neuron Pharmaceuticals, ProMedicus, and now Sidian. I'm actually a shareholder of Neuron Pharmaceuticals and ProMedicus. I'm very bullish on Neuron Pharmaceuticals. I think this company could be, you know, just the cash could be flowing in the door over the next few years. Uh, not surprised by ProMedicus because I'm very bullish on the future of that company. However, 
the valuation of that property is fairly rich. So another, I'd say, ProMedicus, I'll put ProMedicus into that cult camp as well. And our Cydian share price has pulled back to the point where I can see this, our Cydian share price um, going up from here. And another company that is very close to being a cult company, not quite there, but among really small cap uh, fund managers, our Cydian is quite beloved at this point in time. So let's have a look at the next three health companies that you chose multiple times. And interestingly enough, I own all three of these companies, Telex Pharmaceuticals and Clinaville. I'm really bullish about the future of those companies. So I'm holding those two companies for the long term. Mesoblast is all about the short to medium term, just trading that, simply because Mesoblast has disappointed significantly over the past few years, but the share price has fallen to $1. And historically, $1 is a really good support level for this company. And the share price falls below $1. There is that potential. We might see another run up in that company's share price. So trading Mesoblast, holding Telix and Clinaville for the long term. Now into small mining companies. And one of these is not really a mining company. We'll call it a mining services company, but that was only the only mining services company that was chosen, and that is Westar Industrial. Share price of that company is just going sideways. And I don't know why there's not more interest in that company. And if I do see a breakout in that company share price, that's when I might hop off board, simply because I do think there's a lot of value in Westar. The market cap of that company is really small. I think this company could be uh, becoming cash flow positive on a continual basis. And I think if it does show the market that sort of thing, I think the share price could go on a pretty good run eventually. Not sure when that's going to be. The other two companies that were chosen, Hot Chili Limited and BlackRock Mining, I know very little about. I could just Google both companies right now just to give a brief rundown of what they do. So, for instance, BlackRock um, Tanzania says here, um, let's have a look a little bit closer. Uh, graphite in Tanzania, which is the world's uh, fourth largest graphite resources. That looks sounds interesting. So I we'll have to do a little bit more research on that company. The current CEO has been at role for about six years now, five and a half years. Uh, says number of employees too, but that's in 2014. Hot chili, not related to the red hot chili peppers. Uh, I have heard this company before, but I can't tell you what they do. Uh, one of the top ASX copper miners with an advanced Chilean, Chilean coastal range portfolio. I'm pretty sure Chile or Peru is the biggest producing countries of copper. So that's probably the right space. So a very interesting, two very interesting companies that I know very little about. Now on to EV metal type companies. So I probably could have put um, BlackRock into this camp as well. But these companies are a little bit well more well known, I suppose you could say that. Sierra Technologies is also a graphite company. Core Lithium, obvious by just the name Core Lithium. They used to be called something else. Then they put the name Lithium in there just because Lithium was sort of the end thing. Sayona, also a Lithium company, and Arafura Resources. I don't know much about that, even though the market cap of Arafura Resources is about $1 billion right now. It's all about rare. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on Arafura resources just because rare earths is really important because the majority of rare earths now, apart from liners, come from China. So it is considered a strategic um, resource, um, a very important strategic resource just because of that concentration um, of uh, rare earths in China. And I think the world, particularly the United States, wants that to come down wants us to be less reliant on China when it comes to rare earths. That's why companies like Arafura Resources, uh, Lioness are very important right now. And that's why some of these companies are getting a lot of money from governments, particularly the American government. Now onto two large miners, and I use the word large uh, pretty openly here because I wouldn't call Karun Energy or even Sandfire as large companies. They're nowhere near the level of BHP or Rio Tinto. But crude energy, the sentiment in this company has changed around or changed significantly in the last, say, two or three years. It was a pretty hated stock about two, three, four years ago. And I sometimes get my years all merged up. Um, they had a lot of cash and not no one was sure what they were going to do with their cash. 
And eventually they went down the path. And it looks like the path they went down is being successful. And right now I'd almost call Crew Energy a cult stock. It is quite favoured. It is talked a lot about. Sandfire is all about copper. And after BHP's um, acquisition of uh, the other copper, Oz Minerals, Sandfire might be the largest copper play on the ASX. And that's why I think there is a little bit of interest in that company. Other interest in Aries Resources, uh, because that is a smaller copper play as well. Now, the question is, um, and you'll see this in, in the news a lot, uh, whether there's going to be a shortage of copper. And I'm trying to find any sort of evidence that that thesis won't play out, that there won't be a shortage in copper, uh, under, under supply in copper, over demand in copper. And that's why copper prices won't uh, rise from here. I'm trying to find the null, the, the antithesis of that sort of side, just because I want, just don't want to be a blind bull. I want to know the other side of the argument. And I'm I'm having difficulty finding the other side of the argument at this point in time, but I need to find it because I don't want to be an ultra bull and be wrong because I just think there's just too much bullishness in the copper space right now. And we're not seeing that really play out with copper prices. So there's some reason why copper prices aren't really going on a massive run right now. The copper prices have um, turned into an uptrend, but even then, it's a fairly weak uptrend. So that's what I'm thinking of doing right now is trying to find the someone who's negative on copper in the short to medium term. Now on to tech, and I call these two companies future tech because if they make it, uh, these will be uh, amazing companies on the ASX. Uh, and I think the big word here, if they make it, uh, that's uh, high risk high reward for both of these companies. I have been a shareholder of Brainship in the past, but at this point in time, I need to see them hit that inflection point. So they are moving slowly, in my opinion, right now. The market cap is still above $1 billion. Weebit Nano, I don't know much about. The future memory. So they put the word future in the name or their logo. Um, then I had a look at the market cap and Weebit Nano's market cap. Um, not sure if you call them Weebit, Nano or just Weebit, but Weebit's uh, market cap is something like 600 million. Let's have a look. Weebit market cap, 600 million. That's what I'm saying right now. Weebit Nano. Yeah, they've got the name Weebit Nano in there. Um, so they are, I'm just going to, a public semiconductor IP company founded in Israel in 2015, headquartered in Hot Hasharon, Israel. So it's interesting that they're Israeli company. Company develops resistive random access memory technologies, which is a specialized form, specialized form of non-volatile memory for the semiconductor industry. Just the very fact that it's all about semiconductors. Trying to get the market cap here. Nowhere's got the market cap. So let's have a look at market index. I like market index website. Uh, so ordinary shares, 173 million shares on issue. Share price is $3.25. Mark at 564 million. So there is a little bit of hot air in Weebit Nano share price right now, just like Brainship. But if these companies make it, uh, there is a reason why the valuation of these companies is quite high. But again, it's all about the if. And that's the question right now, if they make it. Now onto profitable companies. And they all these companies are totally different sectors doing totally different things. So we have corporate travel management. Share price has pulled back a lot, and I'm becoming interested in corporate tra travel management. Share price last time I looked was around about fourteen to fifteen dollars. Let's have a look. Always get confused with um, corporate travel management ticket code is not CTM. That's Centura Metals or Centurus Metals, and their ticket code is CTD. And their share price fourteen dollars and seventy three cents. Uh, yeah, one year return negative thirty four percent. Dividend yield is fairly small, but and it says here the P/E ratio 670. So uh, you don't look at uh, valuation metrics for this company right now or any other travel companies. But share price has pulled back a fair bit. Uh, so back in April, share price got as high as about 26, almost 27 dollars. So it's almost halved since April or May, and that's the main reason I would be interested in corporate travel. Next day, say I've have held that in the past. Um, and not much interest in that company unless I see the share price moving into an uptrend. Domino's, I'm very close to taking a position in Domino's because it does look like 
the sentiment in that company is shifting around. And Domino's Pizza is another company that is almost at cult-like status among fan managers. I keep hearing really positive reports about that company, but particularly about the, uh, the long-term growth for Domino's Pizza. So we're talking about five to 10 years growth. And when I had a look at the company, did a brief research, I can understand why fund managers would be excited about the potential of growth in that company. And Goodman Group, all about property and by far the most popular and highest quality property company on the ASX. Um, calling them a property company, um, is that unfair? Let's just Google Goodman Group and just see what they call themselves. Goodman is a global property expert in logistics and business space. So maybe calling them a Property company is doing a bit unfair. Wikipedia says they're an integrated commercial industrial property group that owns, develops, and manages real estate. So calling a property group or property company uh, is probably not, not a bad thing to say, but definitely the highest quality uh, company like that on the ASX. And the last three companies that were selected twice, and I wasn't quite sure where to put these companies, so I just thought I'd combine these three companies into the one slide and call them interesting. And they're interesting to different degrees. I probably call Airtask the least interesting, the online marketplace. iCandy just above that. I think iCandy does uh, games, computer games, that sort of mobile games, that sort of thing. Uh, that could be completely wrong. But the last time I looked at that company quite a few years ago, that's what they did. And by far, the most interesting company in this group is Calyx. Maybe that's just me. They have really interesting technology in the kiln process or the calcination kiln process. So have a look at their website. They do have a brochure, um, but the market is really interested in uh, Calyx. The ca current market of Calyx, let's have a look, uh, has come down a lot. So share price is $4.47. At one point this year, the share price was above $9. The current market it looks like it's around $806 million. Company is not profitable, but just what they do, their technology makes this company really interesting. And again, I probably wouldn't call this a cult company just yet, but there are some fund managers who are really interested, who really like this company. But I sit, still wouldn't call them a cult company just yet because that thinking is not persuasive uh, or evasive, persuasive around the fund manager area or space. Uh, still a lot of uh, fund managers know nothing about that company. Pervasive, that was the word I was looking for in terms of Calyx. It's not pervasive around fund managers just yet. Anyway, those are your stock picks for 2023. Hopefully, one of the companies you chose made it onto the list. If not, maybe you're going to be the one who succeeds and become the best performing stock picker for 2023 because that's probably the way to win is pick one company that no one else has picked. And then that company has some sort of really important catalyst for re-rating, a significant re-rating in the share price. So maybe a five bagger, maybe even a 10 bagger. And if that happens to you, more than likely you will become the best stock picker for 2023. So I hope you've enjoyed the list. If you have anything to say about this list, or maybe you want to put in your list for companies you think will perform good or well in 2023, just leave that list in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.